when you tell people to pray, they can't. Because it's in prayer that the battle of the flesh is won. In Luke chapter 9 verse 29, it said, as he prayed, it said the fashion of his countenance was altered. Before the prayer struck heaven, the prayer began to transform him. And he said his raiment began to glister. Everything about him began to showcase divinity. Because when you begin to put on prayer garments, what it will do is that it will destroy the weight of flesh that have limited you. When Paul said, I beat my body, he wasn't blowing himself. He came to the church in Corinth. He said, I thank my God that I speak in tongue more than all of you. It's in the place of, in the place of prayer that he beat his body. Sometimes you start praying and then you pray for 10 minutes. It looks as if you want to die. That's when the journey began. If you can cover another 40 minutes, you will discover that maybe you have dealt with something that is of the flesh. The next time you come, you are no longer stopping at two, 10 minutes. You have gone to 50 minutes. And then you stretch. The moment you read 50 minutes, you become weak. Those are alarm systems of the flesh. If you want to deal with the flesh and bring out the power of your ordination, you will not stop when your flesh says to stop. You will stop after you've had an encounter. Because what stops our prayer is not time. What stops our prayer are the encounters that we have with God. That's why when you mature, you stop praying with time. You pray with encounters. You will not stop until a word comes. Do you not read about the prophet? You hear that the word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. That's when they stop praying. They stop praying when feedback begins to come from heaven. But you see, we have not mastered how to win the battle of flesh. So we just pray with time. One hour, two hours. Wake up. If you want to transit, you must break out of time. And the way to break out of time is to labor on the altar until everything that stops you from praying is broken off. And when you have reached there, you will discover that the more you pray, the more you want to pray. You will start praying and you begin to enjoy it. Because sometimes as you pray, you break into a dimension and you start seeing things. You start traveling. Sometimes you begin to hear songs and rhythms from another world. You know that you have left the casing of flesh. That period, anything can happen. Your destiny will begin to have vocabulary. Men who don't pray can never transit. You can receive impartations. Impartation will last for a season. But what will carry you through the journey of life and destiny is the extent to which you can raise incense. I'm not talking about a prayer meeting. I'm talking about a life of incense. A man comes to a point where tonguing becomes part of his life. While he's at work, while he's in the market, unconsciously he's staying something. Even him doesn't know because another life force has been activated. He can be talking to you and he mutters in tongues. He doesn't even know what he's doing. There is another realm calling him. Because when you pray, after a while, you will discover that another realm will begin to call you. Your prayer will no longer be a religious activity. It will become a vehicle in the spirit. A vehicle. And sometimes, even when you are in the market, the realm will be summoning you. And while you are there, you will be communicating. Have you seen a madman before? That's a man who understands traveling and spiritual trafficking system. He is so conscious of that realm that you think he's a misfit for your own realm. When you begin to pray and that life hits you, that realm will become more real to you than this realm. You will discover that men don't need to act spirituality. Everything a man does is a download of a dimension from another reality. But it will take prayer to get there. Even a message cannot take you there. A message can only stir hunger in your spirit. It is you paying the price to journey that will take you there. A title can take you there. I tell you, we are a generation hoping to transit by impartations. We want people to lay hands on us. A thousand and one people have laid hands on you. Where have you gone to? It was Paul that told Timothy to fan to flame. I know I have laid hands on you. I'm a great apostle. There's no argument about it. But you have to fan to flame the gift of God that was laid upon you. Not just when I laid hands on you, but when the whole presbytery laid their hands on you. Because the laying on of the hands of the presbytery is not enough. You must join me there by prayer. That was how Jesus did it. And that's how everybody will do it. In Acts chapter 9 verse 11, Jesus appeared to Paul on his way to Damascus. 
And that didn't change Paul's life. Rather, Paul became blind. So, so, why persecutest thou me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. This is not an angel. This is the Lord in his glory. In verse 4 and 5. But Paul rather became blind. And he sent Paul to the city. But Paul was wise. He has read the Torah. He knows that prayer is the key. And so when you study Acts 9 verse 11. When Jesus was sending Ananias to Paul. He told him two things. Number one. He says to go to that house. And he will find Paul. The one who is praying. There are many souls there. But the one I'm talking about. The way you will know the man to transit. Is the one that is praying. And Paul was there for three days. And for three days he was praying. And the moment Ananias came, even if there were a thousand souls, only one was praying. And only the one praying is qualified for transition. And when he showed up, he told him that Paul has already seen in a vision. So while Paul was praying, Jesus was further communicating with him. Because Jesus told Ananias that Paul has seen in a vision that a man is coming to him. So when Ananias came, Paul was not surprised. He already knew that the protocol of transition had been initiated. But the way he stepped into it was that what? He was praying. He was praying. There are many angels that are sent to some of us. But they were supposed to meet us praying. When they came, we were praying PS 2.13. There were many prophets that were sent to town to bring the word of the Lord to us. But when they came, we were watching Mortal Kombat. Or we were watching uh, a classical. And when the angel was trying to signal, you were arguing the records of Barcelona against Real Madrid. The last five El Clasico. Madrid won all. And you are calling the goals. Calling those who scored. Calling the time when they scored. And when the angel can't reach you, he will go back. But like Paul, when they show up, incense are rising. On the strength of that incense, your, they will find you. They will find you. They will not find you by your complexion. They will find you by your incense. Hey, hey, hey. your flesh will stop you from praying many times and so if you want to transcend two things you must do around prayer is that cultivate a discipline of praying don't pray because you felt like it don't pray because you saw a vision make prayer a part of your daily routine until prayer dominates your life number two have a timetable for prayer. Don't just go and say, sometimes I feel like praying when I feel like. No. Create a rigid routine around prayer until prayer becomes a forceful part of your destiny. If that can happen, you have already won a battle. It's called the battle of flesh. Not too long, you will discover that trafficking spiritual signals will become natural with you. And when those things begin to happen, then your transition must happen, whether the devil likes it or not. Thank you.